Will, from your perspective, you're, you're now the head of farms and estates. Congratulations. Very Thank exciting you. times for all of us. Um, on the people theme, how are you seeing um, the change in aspiration by potential buyers? Who's picking up the phone to you on a Monday morning saying they want to buy a farm or an estate? It's just a completely new section of the market that we hadn't seen before. Traditional landowners expanding, um, farmers looking for uh, sort of tax-driven purchases have been joined by a whole new raft of buyers purely focused on environmental enhancement, um, the buzzword of rewilding. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it is a big new driver for people and they really do feel that by land ownership they can make a difference. Mm. And, and often they will not have experience of owning or managing rural land, so presumably um, the skill sets and advice required from businesses like Knight Frank is incredibly important to them. I think a lot of these people will need a lot of strategic advice. You know, they are going in because uh, this is a new thing that they are looking to get their hands on. Um, it is not something they've dealt with before, um, but you know, they really believe that they can make a difference by land ownership. And just families buying or is there an institutional change? No, we're seeing a, a huge shift from institutional purchasers who realise that they need to be fulfilling a lot of their ESG credentials and land ownership will be one of the biggest things they can do. Um, at the moment, I'm not sure they're quite ahead of the game compared to the, the private investors, um, but equally, um, a lot of them are still up against the, the tax-driven farmer looking to, to roll over funds, so it's a competitive world out there. Yeah, and, and as a selling agent, you, you know, people have got to make decisions pretty quickly when, when they're up against competitive. No, no, it's, it's, it's important to get your ducks in a row. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There are a lot of people who, um, you know, who are driven by, by, by the need for land. Um, and this country really, I'm afraid, is not getting any bigger. Yeah, interesting. And Will, for your, your new buyers, for want of a better expression, rather than um, uh, rollover purchases, um, you know, they're coming into it. How, how many of them are actually out and out um, farmers? How many of them, how many of them want to, to, to farm conventionally or are they far more interested in conservation? I think that conservation is definitely at the, at the heart of what they're trying to do, but I think what will be interesting is that as much as they have deep pockets, ultimately they will want to see that their um, asset is actually making them some money. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how quickly they realise that they need the sort of strategic advice to allow them to have an asset that is doing that. I think that environmental enhancement is at the forefront of it, but many are uh, looking at sort of regenerative farming, um, rewilding again, you know, uh, tree planting. Uh, but I think that money will play a role ultimately. So, um, a relatively small percentage of new buyers looking to completely rewild and, and, and abandon the sort of land use for want of a, 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 an intervention. An increasing amount wanting to do a more environmental, conservation-minded, regenerative agriculture. I would say so. I think that you know a good example was we, we sold a thousand acres in Hampshire. Yeah. Um, we had a, a wealthy landowner who initially was very interested. They were then outbid by a, um, a group of rewilders, who were ultimately then bidding against an institutional investor. Um, but the local farmer with rollover from his grandfather's farm, 150 miles away, ultimately was the was the purchaser.